Here's the FX138 2 by 50 watt stereo amplifier. Notice it's a TDA7492. And these amps can be had for about uh, $10.50, lowest price I've seen. Um, we're going to evaluate if they really do 50 watts per channel. Is that 50 watts peak or 50 watts RMS? Uh, so let's find out. Got this one set up here. This is the uh, same thing as you can see. To um, be sure, I'm also driving it with an oscillator. This is the TAC the TO122A test one oscillator. Also have this nice uh, power supply. This is uh, 24 volt. Actually goes up about 26 volts, 8.4 amps. So it's got plenty of uh, power to drive, an amps to drive this, this thing. The test set up here. It's not too pretty, but here it is. We got uh, notice a 3.9 ohm, which is close to 4 ohm, uh, and a 2 ohm in series. And we're look, going to be looking at the scope here, the Tektronix 2445 oscilloscope. So we'll be uh, looking at the waveform on that. Now for a moment, we'll go over here to the specs. And let's notice on the specs here, I'll zoom in on that. Again, this is the chip that is in the um, 50 watt by 50 watt Class D audio amplifier. It is the TDA7492 chip. And they're saying, yes, it's going, it will give 50 watts each channel continuous output power at into 6 ohms at, whoops, total harmonic distortion of 10%. Not real good. And that's at a rail of 25 volts. So we're going to check that. Also notice the other bullet point here. It's uh, they don't tell you in either one of these. Is it 40 watts by 40 watts? Again, and that's an 8 ohms. Okay, you can accept that. But in the 6 ohms, they don't tell you whether average or RMS power. They just say continuous output. So we're going to put this to the test and see what happens here. So let's start with the power. I'm going to check the power with the meter here. It's a flute. And we'll check the power input on this amp should be about like right at what and put you can see it's 25.12 volts pretty pretty good right there and that's from our power supply here we got again a, si a total of six ohm uh, load resistance here and we're looking at the waveform of the scope we'll start out with 1k hertz all right 1000 cycles per second so here we go and there's our waveform. Get it out of the light so we can see it better. Now I'm going to turn it up here to the point of clipping. Let's watch it. See what it does when it clips. Uh, that's got quite a bit of headroom there. You notice how, let's look at the clipping on this. These don't clip in the normal way. They actually show an oscillation at the bottom there. But we're going to run this up to on 1K. I'm going to turn the voltage down a bit. I just turned it down to one volt per division. That's okay. And what I'm going to do, we're going to get rid of this distortion here. Again, I'm going to turn this volume down, that little bit of distortion there, until it just comes down out of that. There. Now that's a pure, very pure looking sine wave. Now we'll take the uh, cursors, voltage cursors, and we're going to put it on the on the peaks there. Okay. There it is. Now, that's pretty darn close to what we need. And that then says 34.2 volts peak to peak. So what we do is we'll do a formula, power, power formula, is take 34.2. We've got to divide that by 2 to get peak to peak down to peak value. And... Uh, so we divide by 2. Divide by 2. That's the normal way of doing it. That now equals 17.1. So now we're going to get uh, the peak value. Okay, so we take 17 E squared over R. 
we're going to use e squared over r and take this number, multiply it by itself, equals, okay, there it is. Now we divide that by 6 ohms. Look at there, 48.735 watts. That's almost 50 watts. Well, we could call that 50 watts. The difference is this is peak watts. Now let's go back and redo the formula again. Only this time we're going to look for RMS value. Okay, again we look at this, 34.2 volts. And to verify that we still have good power supply regulation, let's check the voltage again. Those resistors are getting mighty hot. And there's 25 volts, spot on. 25 volts at the board, all right? Those resistors are nice and, and toasty, wow. And the heat sink is not bad, not bad at all. Now again, this is at 1K, all right? 1,000 hertz. So, again, we're looking at this waveform, undistorted. That's as high as it goes at 34.2 volts. Now we're going to look, we're going to calculate the RMS value. 4.2 divided by 2. We want peak value on this. Okay, there it is. 17.1. But now we're going to take this number and get the RMS value from it. So we take that times 0 0.707. That's, see that? All right. Now there's our RMS voltage. That's what we need. So now we're going to square that and multiply it times itself. And there it is. Okay. Enter that. Now we divide by 6. Divide by 6. Look at that. 24 watts RMS. 24 watts. So, and that's at just 1K. Now we're going to look at other frequencies to see how this amp works at other frequencies. Will this amp do a pure uh, 24 watts RMS or even 50 watts, 48 watts RMS at say 15 kilohertz? So, turn the oscillator all the way up to 15. Just going to jump there. That's the best way to do this. We haven't done anything other than just change the frequency. And now we're going to look at it on the scope. And if we notice, there's just a little bit of, uh, it's hard to see on this, but it's just starting to, that's at 15 kilohertz. It's just starting to break into distortion here. And you see the voltage is a little bit lower. So let's see. Let's do this uh, again. We're going to take our cursors here and put the cursors down at the sine wave. This is 15 kilohertz again. So now, from peak to peak, and I'm going to just let that little bit of distortion on the uh, bottom peaks go ahead and let it go. Now we have 31.0 volts peak to peak. Yeah, 31. That's 31 volts peak value. All right, we'll do peak value for starters. That means we take 31 and we multiply it by itself. It's uh, E squared over R, 31 volts. There it is. That's right, we got to divide by two to get the peak value, not peak to peak, because that's not what we want here. And there's 15.5 volts, right? All right, so now we're going to take that and square it uh, times itself. Okay, there's that. Now divide by 6, which is our output impedance or resistance. There's 40 watts. Okay, that's 40 watts peak. 40 watts peak, not RMS. So now we're going to do the RMS value. Let's see what that comes out to. So if we take, again, uh, the uh, 31 volts, or, and it's, uh, you divide it in two, that's 15. Now we take get the RMS value, fi RMS value of 15.5, and let's see what that is. 
and you multiply that times 0.707. All right, there it is. So now we take this number and multiply it times itself. See there? Okay. Then divide it by 6, which again is our resistance. Look at that. 20 watts RMS. See there. 20 watts RMS. So, now let's go back to our amplifier. And we see that's 20 watts. RMS. Top dead center. That's all you can do on this. Now we're going to see how well the it tracks through the power range. This I'll Turn this up a little bit, the intensity of it. Okay. So now we're going to change the frequency from 15 to 10K. And let me wind it out a little bit. And yeah, starting to see distortion up here. Every, the levels are pretty much the same, but okay, we're going to accept that. That's probably the 10% total harmonic distortion starting or thereabouts. Let's go down to, well let's go to 1K. And here is 1K and you notice it's starting to look, it's pretty clean. It can actually do more on 1K than it can anything. But, alright, we go down to, what's the next frequency down? 400 and starting to break into a little bit of distortion there which could probably be ignored at this point. And then finally 40 Hertz which change that and one more time so we can now see that it's really clean so busted this amp will only do 20 watts it's 20 watts per channel into a 6 ohm load with a, a 25 volt rail okay you probably get a little more out of this at 26 volts maybe 27 but that's really pushing the amp to its limits at 20 watts per channel it does work quite nicely but the conclusion is this amp is really a 20 watt RMS per channel flat response amplifier um, at RMS it will do 50 watts uh, peak value and that's one thing we need to be advised on this particular amp that it will do only do 50 watts per channel peak not RMS value. So again we can now understand that this 50 by 50 watt is actually peak value. They don't tell you that in the specs but this is peak power per channel. It's not true RMS. That's into 6 ohm loads. So a 25 volt rail. Uh, this amp will safely do 20 watts uh, undistorted cross a, a flat frequency response at 20 watts. This amp, however, is not a true 50 watt RMS amplifier across the whole frequency range.